Chapters 16 through 24 of First Samuel from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 16. Yahweh said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send to you Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided a king for myself among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. Yahweh said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to sacrifice to Yahweh. Call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint to me whom I name to you. Samuel did that which Yahweh spoke, and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to Yahweh. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. He sanctified Jesse and his sons, and called them to the sacrifice. It happened, when they had come, that he looked at Eliab, and said, Surely Yahweh's anointed is before him. But Yahweh said to Samuel, Don't look on his face, or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For I see not as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance. But Yahweh looks at the heart. Then Jesse called to Minadab, and made a pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has Yahweh chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema to pass by. He said, Neither has Yahweh chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. Samuel said to Jesse, Yahweh has not chosen these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your children here? He said, There remains yet the youngest, and behold, he is keeping the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and withal of a beautiful face, and goodly to look on. Yahweh said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of Yahweh came mightily on David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now the Spirit of Yahweh departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from Yahweh troubled him. Saul's servant said to him, See now an evil spirit from God troubles you. Let our Lord now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp. It shall happen, when the evil spirit from God is on you, that he shall play with his hand, and you shall be well. Saul said to his servants, Provide me now a man who can play well, and bring him to me. Then one of the young men answered and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who was skillfully in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a comely person, and Yahweh is with him. Therefore Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me David your son, who was with the sheep. Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, and a bottle of wine, and a young goat, and sent them by David his son to Saul. David came to Saul and stood before him. He loved him greatly, and he became his armor-bearer. Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Please let David stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. It happened, when the Spirit from God was on Saul, that David took the harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Chapter 17 Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, and they were gathered together at Soko, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Azekah in Ephesdamim. Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and encamped in the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. There went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of brass on his head, and he was clad with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. He had brass shin armor on his legs, and a javelin of brass between his shoulders. The staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron, and his shield-bearer went before him. He stood and cried to the armies of Israel, and said to them, Why have you come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine, and you servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you will be our servants and serve us. The Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. 
When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons, and the man was an old man in the days of Saul, stricken among men. The three eldest sons of Jesse had gone after Saul to the battle, and the names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, the next to him Aminadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. Now David went back and forth from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. The Philistine drew near, morning and evening, and presented himself forty days. Jesse said to David his son, Now take for your brothers an ephah of this parched grain, and these ten loaves, and carry them quickly to the camp to your brothers, and bring these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousand, and see how your brothers are doing, and bring back news. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. David rose up early in the morning, and left the sheep with a keeper, and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the place of the wagons, as an army, which was going forth to the fight, shouted for the battle. Israel and the Philistines put the battle in array, army against army. David left his baggage in the hand of the keeper of the baggage, and ran to the army, and came and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the ranks of the Philistines, and spoke according to the same words. And David heard them. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were terrified. The men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? He has surely come up to defy Israel. It shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man who kills this Philistine, and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? The people answered him in this way, saying, So shall it be done to the man who kills him. Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why have you come down? With whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the naughtiness of your heart, for you have come down that you might see the battle. David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? He turned away from him toward another, and spoke like that again. And the people answered him again the same way. When the words were heard which David spoke, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. David said to Saul, Your servant was keeping his father's sheep, and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after him and struck him, and rescued it out of his mouth. When he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and struck him, and killed him. Your servant struck both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, Yahweh, who delivered me out of the paw of the lion, and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and Yahweh shall be with you. Saul dressed David with his clothing, and he put a helmet of brass on his head, and he clad him with a coat of mail. David strapped his sword on his clothing, and he tried to move, for he had not tested it. David said to Saul, I can't go out with these, for I have not tested them. David took them off. He took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five smooth stones out of the brook, and he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in his wallet. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. When the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, and ruddy, and withal of a fair face. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? The Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the sky, and to the animals of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of Yahweh of armies the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today Yahweh will deliver you into my hand. I will strike you and take your head from off you. I will give the dead bodies of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and to the wild animals of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that Yahweh doesn't save with sword and spear, 
for the battle is Yahweh's, and he will give you into our hand. It happened, when the Philistine arose, and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried, and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. David put his hand into the bag, took a stone, and slung it, and struck the Philistine in his forehead, and the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine, and took his sword and drew it out of its sheath, and killed him, and cut off his head therewith. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. The men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted, and pursued the Philistines, until you come to Gai, and to the gates of Ekron. The wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sha'araim, even to Gath and to Ekron. The children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines, and they plundered their camp. David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. When Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the captain of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth? Abner said, As your soul lives, O king, I can't tell. The king said, Inquire whose son the young man is. As David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. Saul said to him, Whose son are you, you young man? David answered, I am the son of your servant Jesse the Bethlehemite. Chapter 18 It happened, when he had made an end of speaking to Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him that day, and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant, because he loved him as his own soul. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him, and gave it to David, and his clothing even to his sword, and to his bow, and to his sash. David went out wherever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and it was good in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. It happened as they came, when David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with tambourines, with joy, and with instruments of music. The women sang one to another as they played, and said, Saul has slain his thousands, David his ten thousands. Saul was very angry, and this saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. What can he have more but the kingdom? Saul eyed David from that day forward. It happened on the next day that an evil spirit from God came mightily on Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. David played with his hand as he did day by day. Saul had a spear in his hand, and Saul threw the spear, for he said, I will pin David even to the wall. David escaped from his presence twice. Saul was afraid of David, because Yahweh was with him, and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him, and made him captain over a thousand, and he went out and came in before the people. David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and Yahweh was with him. When Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he stood in awe of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for he went out and came in before them. Saul said to David, Behold my elder daughter Merab, I will give her to you as wife. Only be valiant for me, and fight Yahweh's battles. For Saul said, Don't let my hand be on him, but let the hand of the Philistines be on him. David said to Saul, Who am I, and what is my life, or my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? But it happened at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given to Adriel the Mahalathite as wife. Michal, Saul's daughter, loved David, and they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. Saul said, I will give her to him, that she may be a snare to him, and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Therefore Saul said to David, You shall be my son-in-law a second time. Saul commanded his servants, Talk with David secretly, and say, Behold, the king has delighted in you, and all his servants love you. Now therefore be the king's son-in-law. Saul's servants spoke those words in the ears of David. David said, Does it seem to you a light thing to be the king's son-in-law, since I am a poor man and lightly esteemed? The servants of Saul told him, saying, David spoke like this. Saul said, You shall tell David, The king desires no dowry except one hundred foreskins of the Philistines, to be avenged of the king's enemies. Now Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. When his servants told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law. The days were not expired, and David arose and went, 
he and his men, and kill the Philistines, two hundred men. And David brought their foreskins, and gave them in full number to the king, that he might be the king's son-in-law. Saul gave him Michal, his daughter, as wife. Saul saw and knew that Yahweh was with David, and Michal, Saul's daughter, loved him. Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul was David's enemy continually. The princess of the Philistines went forth, and it happened, as often as they went forth, that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was highly esteemed. Chapter 19 Saul spoke to Jonathan his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeks to kill you. Now therefore, please, take care of yourself in the morning, and live in a secret place, and hide yourself. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I will talk with my father about you. And if I see anything, I will tell you. Jonathan spoke good of David to Saul his father, and said to him, Don't let the king sin against his servant, against David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his works have been very good toward you. For he has put his life in his hand, and struck the Philistine. And Yahweh worked a great victory for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against innocent blood, to kill David without a cause? Saul listened to the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swore, As Yahweh lives, he shall not be put to death. Jonathan called David, and Jonathan showed him all those things. Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as before. There was war again. David went out and fought with the Philistines, and killed them with a great slaughter, and they fled before him. An evil spirit from Yahweh was on Saul, as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand. And David was playing with his hand. Saul sought to pin David even to the wall with the spear, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he stuck the spear into the wall. David fled and escaped that night. Saul sent messengers to David's house to watch him and to kill him in the morning. Michal, David's wife, told him, saying, If you don't save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. So Michal let David down through the window. He went, fled, and escaped. Michal took the teraphim and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair at its head and covered it with the clothes. When Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. Saul sent the messengers to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may kill him. When the messengers came in, behold, the teraphim was in the bed, with the pillow of goat's hair at its head. Saul said to Michal, Why have you deceived me thus, and let my enemy go, that he has escaped? Michal answered Saul, He said to me, Let me go. Why should I kill you? Now David fled and escaped, and came to Samuel to Ramah, and told him all that Saul had done to him. He and Samuel went and lived in Naoth, and it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naoth in Ramah. Saul sent messengers to take David, and when they saw the company of prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as head over them, the Spirit of God came on the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. When it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they also prophesied. Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they also prophesied. Then went he also to Ramah, and came to the great well that is in Siku, and he asked, Where are Samuel and David? One said, Behold, they are at Naoth in Ramah. He went there to Naoth in Ramah. Then the Spirit of God came on him also, and he went on and prophesied, until he came to Naoth in Ramah. He also stripped off his clothes, and he also prophesied before Samuel, and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Therefore they say, Is Saul also among the prophets? Chapter 20 David fled from Naoth in Ramah, and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is my iniquity? What is my sin before your father that he seeks my life? He said to him, Far from it, you shall not die. Behold, my father does nothing either great or small, but that he discloses it to me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. David swore moreover, and said, Your father knows well that I have found favor in your eyes. And he says, Don't let Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as Yahweh lives, and as your soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. And Jonathan said to David, Whatever your soul desires, I will even do it for you. David said to Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to dine with the king. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field to the third day at evening. If your father miss me at all, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me, that he might run to Bethlehem, his city, for it is the yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he says, It is well, your servant shall have peace. But if he be angry, then know that evil is determined by him. Therefore deal kindly with your servant, 
for you have brought your servant into a covenant of Yahweh with you. But if there is iniquity in me, kill me yourself, for why should you bring me to your father? Jonathan said, Far be it from you, for if I should at all know that evil were determined by my father to come on you, then wouldn't I tell you that? Then David said to Jonathan, Who shall tell me if perchance your father answers you roughly? Jonathan said to David, Come, and let us go out into the field. They both went out into the field. Jonathan said to David, By Yahweh, the God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about this time tomorrow, or the third day, behold, if there is good toward David, shall I not then send to you and disclose it to you? Yahweh do so to Jonathan, and more also, should it please my father to do you evil, if I don't disclose it to you, and send you away, that you may go in peace. And Yahweh be with you, as he has been with my father. You shall not only, while yet I live, show me the loving kindness of Yahweh, that I not die, but also you shall not cut off your kindness from my house forever. No, not when Yahweh has cut off the enemies of David, every one from the surface of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Yahweh will require it at the hand of David's enemies. Jonathan caused David to swear again, for the love that he had to him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. Then Jonathan said to him, Tomorrow's a new moon, and you will be missed because your seat will be empty. When you have stayed three days, you shall go down quickly, and come to the place where you hid yourself when this started, and shall remain by the stone Azel. I will shoot three arrows on its side, as though I shot at a mark. Behold, I will send the boy, saying, Go find the arrows. If I tell the boy, Behold, the arrows are on this side of you, take them, then come, for there is peace to you, and no hurt, as Yahweh lives. But if I say this to the boy, Behold, the arrows are beyond you, then go your way, for Yahweh has sent you away. Concerning the matter which you and I have spoken of, behold, Yahweh is between you and me forever. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon had come, the king sat down to eat food. The king sat on his seat, as at other times, even on the seat by the wall, and Jonathan stood up, and Abner sat by Saul's side, but David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul didn't say anything that day, for he thought, Something has happened to him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. It happened on the next day after the new moon, the second day, that David's place was empty. Saul said to Jonathan and his son, Why doesn't the son of Jesse come to eat, neither yesterday nor today? Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. He said, Please let me go, for our family has a sacrifice in the city. My brother has commanded me to be there. Now if I have found favor in your eyes, please let me go away and see my brothers. Therefore he has not come to the king's table. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said to him, You son of a perverse, rebellious woman, don't I know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to your own shame, and to the shame of your mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse lives on earth, you shall not be established, nor your kingdom. Therefore now send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. Jonathan answered Saul his father, and said to him, Why should he be put to death? What has he done? Saul cast a spear at him to strike him. By this Jonathan knew that his father was determined to put David to death. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger, and ate no food for the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David, because his father had done him shame. It happened in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at the time appointed with David, and the little boy with him. He said to his boy, Run, find now the arrows which I shoot. As the boy ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy had come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the boy, and said, Isn't the arrow beyond you? Jonathan cried after the boy, Go fast, hurry, don't delay. Jonathan's boy gathered up the arrows, and came to his master. But the boy didn't know anything. Only Jonathan and David knew the matter. Jonathan gave his weapons to the boy, and said to him, Go carry them to the city. As soon as the boy was gone, David arose out of the south, and fell on his face to the ground, and bowed himself three times. They kissed one another, and wept one with another, and David wept the most. Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, because we have both sworn in the name of Yahweh, saying, Yahweh shall be between me and you, and between my seed and your seed forever. He arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. Chapter 21 Then came David to Nob, to Ahimelech the priest. Ahimelech came to meet David, trembling, and said to him, why are you alone, and no man with you? David said to Ahimelech the priest, The king has commanded me a business, and has said to me, Let no man know anything of the business about which I send you, and what I have commanded you. 
and I have appointed the young men to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under your hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or whatever there is present. The priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is holy bread, if only the young men have kept themselves from women. David answered the priest and said to him, Truly women have been kept from us about these three days. When I came out, the vessels of the young men were holy, though it was but a common journey. How much more than today shall their vessels be holy? So the priest gave him holy bread. For there was no bread there but the showbread that was taken from before Yahweh to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before Yahweh, and his name was Doeg the Edomite, the best of the herdsmen who belonged to Saul. David said to Ahimelech, Isn't there here under your hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. The priest said, the sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here, wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you will take that, take it, for there is no other except that here. David said, There is none like that. Give it to me. David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul, and went to Achish, the king of Gath. The servants of Achish said to him, Isn't this David the king of the land? Didn't they sing one to another about him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, David his ten thousands? David laid up these words in his heart, and was very afraid of Achish the king of Gath. He changed his behavior before them, and pretended to be mad in their hands, and scrabbled at the door of the gates, and let his spittle fall down on his beard. Then Achish said to his servants, Look, you see the man is mad. Why then have you brought him to me? Do I lack madmen that you have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Chapter 22 David therefore departed there, and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. Everyone who was in distress, and everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered themselves to him, and he became captain over them. And there were with him about four hundred men. David went there to Mispeh of Moab, and he said to the king of Moab, Please let my father and my mother come out with you, until I know what God will do for me. He brought them before the king of Moab, and they lived with him all the while that David was in the stronghold. The prophet Gad said to David, Don't stay in the stronghold. Depart and go into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Hedeth. Saul heard that David was discovered and the men who were with him. Now Saul was sitting in Gibeah under a tamarisk tree in Ramah, with a spear in his hand, and all the servants were standing about him. Saul said to his servants who stood about him, Hear now, you Benjamites. Will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards? Will he make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, that all of you have conspired against me? And there is none of you who discloses to me when my son makes a treaty with the son of Jesse. And there is none of you who is sorry for me, or discloses to me that my son has stirred up my servant against me, to lie in wait as at this day. Then Doeg the Edomite, who stood by the servants of Saul, answered and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ahimelech the son of Ahitub. He inquired of Yahweh for him, gave him food, and gave him the sword of Goliath the Philistine. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests who were in Nob, and they came all of them to the king. Saul said, Hear now, you son of Ahitub. He answered, Here I am, my lord. Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me? you and the son of Jesse, in that you have given him bread and a sword, and have inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me, to lie in wait, as at this day. Then Ahimelech answered the king, and said, Who among all your servants is so faithful as David, who was the king's son-in-law, and is taken into your counsel, and is honorable in your house? Have I today begun to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me. Don't let the king impute anything to his servant, nor to all the house of my father. For your servant knows nothing of all this, less or more. The king said, You shall surely die, Ahimelech, you and all your father's house. The king said to the guard who stood about him, Turn and kill the priests of Yahweh, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew that he fled, and didn't disclose it to me. But the servants of the king wouldn't put forth their hand to fall on the priests of Yahweh. The king said to Doeg, Turn and attack the priests. Doeg the Edomite turned, and he attacked the priests, and he killed on that day eighty-five people who wore a linen ephod. He struck Nob, the city of the priests, with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children, and nursing babies, and cattle, and donkeys, and sheep, with the edge of the sword. 
One of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. Abiathar told David that Saul had slain Yahweh's priests. David said to Abiathar, I knew on that day, when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I am responsible for the death of all the persons of your father's house. Stay with me, don't be afraid, for he who seeks my life seeks your life, for with me you shall be in safeguard. Chapter 23 David was told, Behold, the Philistines are fighting in Kilah and are robbing the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of Yahweh, saying, Shall I go and strike these Philistines? Yahweh said to David, Go strike the Philistines and save Kilah. David's men said to him, Behold, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we go to Kilah against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of Yahweh yet again. Yahweh answered him and said, Arise, go to Kilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into your hand. David and his men went to Kilah and fought with the Philistines, and brought away their livestock, and killed them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Kilah. It happened when Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David to Kilah, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. It was told Saul that David had come to Kilah. Saul said, God has delivered him into my hand, for he is shut in by entering into a town that has gates and bars. Saul summoned all the people to war to go down to Kilah to besiege David and his men. David knew that Saul was devising mischief against him, and he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the ephod here. Then David said, O Yahweh, the God of Israel, your servant has surely heard that Saul seeks to come to Kilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Kilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? Yahweh, the God of Israel, I beg you, tell your servant. Yahweh said, he will come down. Then David said, Will the men of Kilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? Yahweh said, They will deliver you up. Then David and his men, who were about six hundred, arose and departed out of Kilah, and went wherever they could go. It was told Saul that David was escaped from Kilah, and he gave up going there. David stayed in the wilderness with the strongholds, and remained in the hill country in the wilderness of Ziph. Saul sought him every day, but God didn't deliver him into his hand. David saw that Saul had come out to seek his life. David was in the wilderness of Ziph in the wood. Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the woods and strengthened his hand in God. He said to him, Don't be afraid, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find you, and you shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you, and that also Saul my father knows. They both made a covenant before Yahweh, and David stayed in the woods, and Jonathan went into his house. Then the Ziphites came up to Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doesn't David hide himself with us in the strongholds in the wood, in the hill of Hakilah, which is on the south of the desert? Now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of your soul to come down, and our part shall be to deliver him up into the king's hand. Saul said, You are blessed by Yahweh, for you have had compassion on me. Please go, make yet more sure, and know and see his place where his haunt is, and who has seen him there for it is told me that he deals very subtly. See, therefore, and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hides himself, and come again to me with certainty, and I will go with you, and it shall happen, if he is in the land, that I will search him out among all the thousands of Judah. They arose and went to Ziph before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon, in the Arabah, on the south of the desert. Saul and his men went to seek him. When David was told, he went down to the rock and stayed in the wilderness of Maon. When Saul heard that, he pursued David in the wilderness of Maon. Saul went on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul. For Saul and his men surrounded David and his men to take them. But a messenger came to Saul, saying, Hurry and come, for the Philistines have made a raid on the land. So Saul returned from pursuing after David, and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called that place Selah Hamalakoth. David went up from there, and lived in the strongholds of En Gedi. Chapter 24 It happened, when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men out of all Israel, and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens by the way, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were abiding in the innermost parts of the cave. The men of David said to him, Behold, the day of which Yahweh said to you, 
Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hands, and you shall do to him as it shall seem good to you. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe secretly. It happened afterward that David's heart struck him, because he had cut off Saul's skirt. He said to his men, Yahweh forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord. Yahweh is anointed to put forth my hand against him, since he is Yahweh's anointed. So David checked his men with these words, and didn't allow them to rise against Saul. Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward and went out of the cave, and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king! When Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the earth and showed respect. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to men's words, saying, Behold, David seeks your hurt? Behold, this day your eyes have seen how that Yahweh had delivered you today into my hand in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you, and I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is Yahweh's anointed. Moreover, my father, behold, yes, see the skirt of your robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the skirt of your robe and didn't kill you? No one see that there is neither evil nor disobedience in my hand, and I have not sinned against you, though you hunt for my life to take it. May Yahweh judge between me and you, and may Yahweh avenge me of you, but my hand shall not be on you. As the proverb of the ancients say, Out of the wicked comes forth wickedness, but my hand shall not be on you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A flea? May Yahweh therefore be judge, and give sentence between me and you, and see, and plead my cause, and deliver me out of your hand. It came to pass, when David had made an end of speaking these words to Saul, that Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have done good to me, whereas I have done evil to you. You have declared this day how you have dealt well with me, because when Yahweh had delivered me up into your hand, you didn't kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him go away unharmed? Therefore, may Yahweh reward you good for that which you have done to me this day. Now behold, I know that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Swear now therefore to me by Yahweh, that you will not cut off my seed after me, and that you will not destroy my name out of my father's house. David swore to Saul. Saul went home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. End of chapters 16 through 24